you guys, folks who are renting for the first time or who haven't rented in a while and are looking to rent in Southern Brooklyn. All right, so let's go through some of the stuff that you would need to prepare in terms of paperwork and how to strategize to getting your best and most favorite apartment, um, especially in a hot and competitive market. All right, so one of the first things you should do is actually know where you stand financially. You know, when you call up an agent or you call up an ad, you'll be asked these same questions. What is your income? What is your credit? Who's moving in with you? Why are you moving? Um, so those are things you wanna have ready. How much you're getting paid and what you do, how long you've worked there. So definitely start compiling some documents and you wanna know this for everyone who's moving in with you. Now let's start gathering your paperwork. You will need your pictures of your photo ID, last three to four pay stubs, the most recent. If you don't have pay stubs, checks can work, uh, possibly deposits into the bank that are regular and steady that we can show. Um, there's a lot of people who forge papers, um, that's a real concern. So definitely try to legitimize your paperwork, You know, make sure everything has your name on it. Uh, next up is most likely credit report. So for credit report, you can use annualcreditreport.com, which is free. That will show you your whole report, every single payment you've made. Just learn how to, <laughs> or you know, just make sure you know how to save or print to PDF and then save the document. That's usually what you have to do. And it's gonna be the whole maybe 40, 50, 70 pages, really. Another thing you can do is Experian Connect, which is uh, basically allows the tenant to run their own report might charge you $15, but the good thing about it is that there's no inquiry. So if I run your report, there will be a hard inquiry. If you run your own report, there's no impact done. And with that one, you can send it directly to the owner. So super awesome, super helpful. Uh, next, you know, definitely you wanna show work history. So W2's help or 1040 tax, 1099, whatever you got to show work history. I know COVID was hard. So if anything, show former years, show that you have some history. And if you are a newbie, let's say you're just starting to work, you want to show a job letter, that's fine. You know, another powerful thing you can do to supplement a situation like that is get rent receipts or get a landlord reference to say that, hey, you know, even though X, Y, and Z happened and I'm just starting this job, I do have a history of paying rent um, on time. So that really helps. You got work history, pay stubs, uh, tax returns, W-2, savings. So for a very nice apartment, you do want to show that you have money ready and so that's why proof of funds come in handy you can show the first page of this month and last month or combined bank statements to show that you have money ready in case of emergencies um, some people do keep money in cash form so that's a conversation you never know which ones could work out um, but yeah those are your rough paperwork there's other things you can get creative with you know maybe you have a lot of money in stocks which is a little uh, less steady but you know it just shows maybe you have rental income of your own so there's a lot of different situations for everybody. Best thing to do is sometimes you do have to practice benefit of the doubt and just articulate your situation. All right, so next step is identify what you want. So that's the biggest step in terms of saving yourself time and headache. Um, you do practice some type of like benefit of the doubt by knowing exactly what you want, but also knowing like things that you know you could kind of have wiggle room with. Uh, so definitely in the beginning, try out as many places, go check it out, ask all the questions before you go, you know, do this for yourself as a favor and do it for the, ten the agent as well. We work really hard, you know, we want to make sure that we're using our time effectively too. So, you know, ask the right questions before you go to a place and ask these questions. These are some questions you can ask is like, what sizes are the rooms? How many closets? Are there closets in the room? Is there an open kitchen living situation? How big is the living room? Um, what, what? Utilities do tenants play. Please read the ads, you know, <laughs> um, before you ask us again. But yes, there are, ask those questions, utilities, pets, you know, does a landlord live there? So how many steps are there? Is there cameras in the front? You know, whatever it is that you, that you want, that you must have, make sure you get that straight before you go. So know what you want and check places out, have your paperwork ready. So the second you really like something, you're able to go and, and give, be the first one to give in your paperwork. Uh, the last thing you want is to lose an opportunity uh, because you hesitated. So get an exposure as much as you can. Um, you're welcome to look at these tours and kind of get an idea of what you might see in the market. Uh, I forgot to add one thing you should always have ready and that is three months upfront. And I'll break this down for you right now. It's usually the first month's rent, the month that you are moving into that, you know, the first, month of the year that you will be paying rent. So that's first month. And then there's one month security. 
legally in New York State, New York City, they are only allowed to collect one month, okay? And there's nothing more than that they can collect as security. And if they do, you know, there's, there's rules and stuff like that. Um, and in terms of your broker fee, broker fee tends to be 8% of the annual rent to about 15% of the annual rent. Really depends on where you are and the market you're in. So when you're seeing roughly uh, 8%, which means one month's rent, 15 is two months rent. Uh, typically it's one month, you know, I don't want you to get scammed. So definitely be careful who you're giving money to, how it's working out, make sure it's a legitimate uh, real estate company. There's a lot of shady stuff in Southern Brooklyn, so be informed, ask all your questions. Um, but yeah, that's it, you definitely need the funds ready. You also should have consent from your owner, uh, the current owner that, you know, the property that you're living in right now, knowing that you know, in most places you need 30 day notice before you move. Okay, so make sure you have the money, your landlord is informed, so you will get your security deposit back. Um, in the case that they're kind of hesitant, you know, and you kind of gave them short notice, one thing you can offer, if I can allow my property to be showed to people who are interested, so I can help facilitate this getting rented without you losing a month of rent. This is really helpful when you're breaking a lease. Uh, but when you're ending a term, you're not really, you know, liable to do that. Um, but one thing that's good about that too is, you know, if you're breaking it, you can hire someone like me and say, hey, I have an agent who I trust who can show the property. Um, and with that in mind, you can probably earn a referral too while you allow that agent to help you out and rent that unit. All right, I do it. So give me a call, I'll help you out um, in your situation and we can all get a win-win situation. All right, but overall, those were the first steps into the apartment. The rest is literally making sure you are firm and finalized on all the details and nuances of what you're signing up for. And when you sign, you bring the funds, you get itemized receipts. Two signed copies of leases, you know, exchange phone numbers, and sometimes they give you the keys a little couple of days earlier, but not too early because of liability issues. All right, so just everything's a conversation and yeah, you should be good to go.